Hello and welcome to another episode of Ankle Saw and Carlton Club Corner, episode 14. David Cunningham, get the f*** out. Jack Martin, get the f*** out. Caleb Marchbank, get the f*** out. Zach Williams, get the f*** out. Orazio Fantasia, get the f*** out. Matt Owies, go away. You're out of contract, get out. We keep keeping these players on the list who are consistently Injured week after week, month after month, year after year. And then we wonder, when we've got injuries, why we can't sustain a good level of football. There it is. There's probably $3 million there. $3 million wasted in the bin. I don't know what's going on, Carlton. Seriously. Wake up and get rid of these hacks. All of them. (laughs) And last but not least, Michael Voss. Get out. Get out of the club. You're finished. You've ruined this club. Ruined. The team that you've got, that list, right? The Carlton list of 2023 and 2024, don't even need a coach. Automatic pilot. You've got Harry Mackay, Patrick Cripps, Sam Walsh, Jacob Wiedering, Charlie Kearney, what else do you want? What else do you want? And yet, you still struggle to win games. What are you doing? How can you ruin what we had four weeks ago? How can you ruin it? Four weeks ago, Jordan Boyd was in the side. Four weeks ago, we played with one Ruckman. Four weeks ago, George Hill was playing his best footy, and yet you put him as a sub against GWS and then drop him the following week. What are you doing? Yet, you bring Matt Cottrell in, who's still, after three games, still not up to AFL level. He's up to it, just not yet. So, how can you ruin it? How? How? I don't understand. I don't understand, during the week, what you do. You don't need to do a thing. You can go and have a coffee every day. You don't need to coach them. You don't need to make the hard decisions. There's no hard decisions to make. That's for the list, ma- list manager to get rid of those players. As for the players that play every sa- uh, weekend, not Saturday, because we don't play just Saturdays, you don't need to do anything. Okay? After round 16, we were two games clear of the third place team, Fremantle, and 7% better off. Let that sink in. Two games clear. Two. That's eight points. Okay? As we sit here on Saturday, after a loss to Port Adelaide on Friday night, we still sit second. However, Brisbane, Fremantle, GWS, and Geelong are yet to play, which means after this weekend, we could drop down to sixth. Well done, Blues, from second to sixth in one weekend. So, Michael, just out of curiosity, when did you know Harry Mackay was out? When was it? Monday, was it Tuesday, was it Friday before the game? Either way, surely you had a contingency plan, surely. You just can't go out and play with no other forward apart from Charlie. So what do you do? You bring in Lewis Young, who I've never seen play forward in his life, a defender at heart. All due respect to Lewis Young, he's not a forward. And you, you sent him out there to try and win us a game of football. Kidding yourself. So the curiosity, what about Mitch McGovern? Do you think he might have gone forward? That's what any normal coach would do. Apart from Ross Lyon, you're the most stubborn coach I've seen in a long, long time. And the Bulldogs supporters have been calling Luke Beveridge stubborn at the start of the year. He had Bailey Dale as a sub, an All-Australian player who's a star of the game. But he finally came around and thought, what am I doing? And the Bulldogs are in contention to play finals because of it. Yet you still can't see the need to change when we need it. When we need it. 
You don't have to coach, but when we have need you to coach, you can't. Hang on, I made a mistake. You did push Mitch McGovern forward. I apologise. The last three minutes of the game, when it was over. Last three minutes of the game, you decided it was a good idea to put Mitch McGovern forward after Leah Leah took eight intercept marks and we couldn't score apart from Charlie. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mind you, we were 31 points up in that game, which no one wants to hear. And yet we get run over by Port Adelaide in Melbourne. Well done, Carlton. Well done. So, Vossi, where's your plan B? Ah, oh, that's it. You put Charlie behind the ball with two minutes to go of every quarter. That's going to win us a lot of games. That just tells the other team they're not going to score. They can't score. Because of one player going back, we have no intention to score. What are you doing? What are you doing? This only ever happened when we were a few points up in the last two minutes of the game. Yet now you seem to do it every quarter. It's actually disgraceful. I hate it, and it's not what we should be doing. Again, Carlton Football Club, you've done nothing. Stop getting ahead of yourselves. And to all the people in the last episode's comments who told me to relax, now do you see? Now do you see what I was trying to say? When I was telling you we can't be dropping these games, do you understand now? Are you relaxed now? I don't think so. So... We've won two out of the last five games. And do you know who we've beaten? If you don't, I'll tell you. Richmond, who are currently dead last 18th, and North Melbourne, who are second last in 17th spot. That's it. That's what we've done in five weeks. You know, when we were second on the ladder, we've beaten the last side and the second last side. Anyway, this year's done. Start playing for next year. It's over, sadly. It's over. And Carlton, start looking for a new coach. Today, it's over. He's destroyed everything. I better leave it there before I get too angry. There you have it. Another episode of Carlton Club Corner in the books. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about the Blues. Love reading all your comments and we'll reply to all of you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.